Okay, we're recording. Um, adequate notice of this meeting of the Zoning Board of Adjustment was sent by email to the Asbury Park Press and CoStar, our official newspapers, and posted at the Municipal Complex and the borough's website and Facebook page. Um, take roll call, Mr. Hutchinson. Here. Mr. Malango. Here. Mr. Gregg. Here. Mr. Lisko. Here. Mr. Ross. Here. Mr. Fitzgerald. Here. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the September 24th, 2020 regular meeting. Would you please join the board in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and justice, justice for all. <clears throat> All right, uh, can I have a motion to waive the reading and approve the August 27th, 2020 minutes? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Gregg. Second. Thank you, Mr. Malengo. Okay, Mr. Hutchinson? Yes. Mr. Malengo? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Lisko? Yes. All right, uh, Mr. Kennedy, next up is the application for Matthew and Mary Ann Ranieri at 107 19th Ave. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I was late in getting all these resolutions, very late. Uh, some of them were fairly easy. So if I can just, uh, Ranieri was the approval to construct the deck. And that was a pretty, you'll, you'll recall the testimony was they created that door in the rear of their home and uh, they can't get down to the ground without this uh, deck being there. So it was pretty straightforward. It was a seven foot by 10 foot deck. And the only conditions of note were um, the plans will be revised so it's confirmed that the deck shall be measured seven feet by 10 feet. I think, Phil, you, you might have been the one that said, look, you're going to have confusing because they were saying 6.9. Or, or it was just, so we just clarified that. Also, there was some confusion on the lot coverage. So we said just revise the plan so that the uh, lot coverage post construction of the deck shall not exceed 59%. And we also just had in here confirming uh, that no roof is going to be placed over the deck without further approval of, of the zoning board. I think those were the gist of, of the conditions. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, all right, can I have a motion to waive the reading and approve the resolution for uh, Matthew and Marianne Ranieri at 107 19th Ave? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Gregg. And a second? Second. Thanks, Mr. Malenga. Hey, Mr. Hutchinson. Abstain. Mr. Malengo? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Abstain. I'm in the notification zone. Uh, Mr. Gregg? Yes. And Mr. Lisko? Yes. All right, Mr. Kennedy, next up is Drew and Beth Fromkin from 201 South Lake Drive. Mr. Chairman, again, I apologize for the delay, but that was for an application, and they were doing a, a, a bunch of improvements demolition of an existing garage construction of, I think, two additions, construction of an attached uh, three-car garage, and installation of an <coughs> in-ground pool. And the application was approved. And let me just scroll down to find my uh, conditions of note, were basically that um, uh, conf a note confirming that the maximum lot coverage was 52.99%. There was some ambiguity between the plans and the applications also about the uh you know revi revision of the plans to include a note that they're going to use good faith efforts to install underground wires i'm sorry underground utilities provided uh, the utility company allows and it's economically feasible and again they report back to us inclusion of yard drains the details of which will be approved by the borough engineer um this was i think an important one inclusion of a note confirming that the bonus space in the garage shall not be utilized as bedroom or otherwise utilized for sleeping purposes. Uh, confirming that the existing generator shall be relocated to a zoning compliant location and confirmation that the uh, generator uh, or air conditioning condenser would be in a zoning compliant location. And I think we wanted confirmation that the pool setback shall be measured to the edge of the water. Um, I think that was the 
uh, overwhelming gist of the conditions, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Can I have a motion to uh, waive the reading and approve the resolution for Drew and Beth Fromkin at 201 South Lake Drive? I will make that motion. Well, oh, sorry, that. We had Mr. Gray and Mr. Malengo. So moved. All right, Mr. Hutchinson? Abstain. Mr. Malengo? Yes. Mr. Ross? Abstain. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Lisko? Yes. All right, next up, Mr. Kennedy is Lisa Mariano and Har Harold Fudali at 206 12th Avenue. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this was an approval uh, to effectuate a number of improvements to an existing single family home. And basically, I think the gist of the uh, findings in here was that number one, uh, the improvements that you all found to be uh, fairly modest in nature, but yet yielding significant functional aesthetic benefits. And uh, you found that the improvements will not materially change the nature of the existing and to be continued single family home. And the conditions of note, uh, and I'm just going to need April's help on this so we can. Well, I'll get back to that in a minute. So the conditions of note were um, we wanted just confirmation that the, the, the plans include a note that there's no height variance because we didn't grant any. And we were going to have a, a note confirming that the applicant shall cause the existing, there was a wire to be buried at site. And I don't buried um, to be buried. Was I guess it was an existing exposed wire or a cable of some sort. I think that was uh, Bob's um, thing. Um, I think it was also, running through the backyard. Is that right? Is that where I couldn't remember where? So we the, we'll say the existing exposed wire in the backyard to be buried at the site. Uh, inclusion of a note confirming that the pool equipment shall be located in a zoning compliant location, or in the absence thereof, they have to reappear before the board. Inclusion of a note, same thing with the air conditioning condensers in a zoning compliant note uh, uh, location and the good faith efforts to put utilities underground. Also revise the plan so it's include a drywall or seepage pit, the details of which will be reviewed and approved by the borough engineer. And likewise, uh, I think Chuck, you would want it in there, uh, made a good point about maintaining, uh, installing and maintaining the drywall or seepage pit or other drainage improvement in accordance with prevailing municipal manufacturing and best practice standards. And the one thing that I wanted to uh, just confirm here uh, with April, was you'll recall, I think there were two or three different versions of the architectural plans that were submitted. I think initially they needed a height variance or they needed a variance for the number of stories. And so there was at least one or two, three revisions. And we basically said uh, that plans that they introduced at the record, whether it was A5 or A7 or A9, were the ones that were approved and the ones that were going you know, to supersede uh, the, the prior uh, uh, previously submitted plan. So I just want, you know, April to confirm with me the ones that, you know, were the ones that supersede, and that's the one that we approve, the other ones we don't approve. So Mr. Chairman, if it's acceptable, we can adopt that subject to clarification from April's review of the of the minutes to just find out what exhibit was the number one, the number of the exhibit that we approved. All right, uh, can I have a motion to waive the reading and approve the resolution with the clarifications as discussed by uh, Mr. Kennedy for Lisa Marino and Harold Fidali at 206 12th Avenue. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. And a second. I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Okay, Mr. Hutchinson. Oh, you're abstaining, you're on mute. <laughs> Abstain. Mr. Malengo? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. And Mr. Lisko? Yes. All right, uh, unless there's any other business, Mr. Kennedy, we're gonna move to our applications tonight. Yes, sir. All right, first up is Lewis Mandia at 1708 8B Street, which is a continuation from last month. Mr. Chairman, there were some late breaking developments with, with this file. I spoke, uh, April and I, uh, actually, uh, April, I don't think you and I spoke uh, with the applicant's attorney. The applicant's attorney asked for an adjournment. Uh, he is exploring some options, uh, um, uh, exploring other development alternatives or other plans or just thinking things over based upon some of the, the board comments. 
So he is asked to be carried until uh, April, what, what date? October 24th. So he is asked to be carried to October 24th, 2020, without the need for any further public notice. He did send a letter and importantly, for you all on the board and anyone in the listening public, he did, uh, the attorney did consent to extend the time frame within which the board has to act on the matter. All right, thanks, Mr. Kennedy. So uh, can I have a motion to, oh, do we need a motion or that? It's already taken care of. I, I would say a, a motion just to, to carry it. All right, so can I have a motion to carry the application for Lewis Mandia at 1708 B Street uh, to the 1024 meeting without the need to do any additional re-notice? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Malenga. I'll, I'll second, but is one, just a point, uh, if it's substantially different, won't he have to uh, re-notice? Yes, absolutely. Right. And so I don't know, he hasn't committed to any course of action, so right. I think he's just thinking about things. Okay. Hey, Mr. Kennedy, I, yeah. um, I, or Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Um, and I understand if it was late, you know, just as of, you know, yesterday or today, but we could have opened up the agenda for somebody else. And, you know, we're having a second meeting due to the volume of, of, of applicants coming in. We're having a second meeting this month. You know, it's a shame to reserve the spot on the agenda for tonight and then somebody else didn't have the opportunity to take advantage of our time slot, yet we're having a second meeting. So um, I, I don't know what to say about it other than, you know, it, it really continuing to push, push, push and take the slot is bumping somebody else and delaying other applicants. So uh, it's just something that I want noted. Yeah, Ed, good point. That's fair. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. All right, so could I have uh, all in favor on carrying the application? Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. No? Okay. All right, so I'm not opposed. All um, right, so, oh, I'm sorry, April, go ahead. There are a couple members of the public raising their hand. I don't know if we want to address them now or not. So, uh, I think it has to do with the Mandia application. I mean, it's, it, Mr. Kenny, I'll defer to you, but, but I mean, you know, the mo the, the the meeting's carried till next month. There's, there's not much else to say. Agreed. I, I defer to you. Uh, we can, uh, you know, however you want to handle it, sir. I, I would offer that if anybody has questions on the application, maybe they could call in to the, uh, the borough clerk tomorrow. <laughs> there we go. So two people deferred on that, answering that, or making that call, April, and then I tished it off to you. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, so next up is uh, the application for Lucille Barbetta and Benjamin Kirsch at 903 Ocean Avenue, Unit 2. Now, Mr. Chairman, on that issue, and to Mr. Fitzgerald, you're going to uh, repeat your, your point again, and that is a very valid point. But as of uh, 4 o'clock today, um, I spoke with the applicant and her attorney. Um, they are still attempting to obtain the uh, jurisdictional information. Um, they're having, uh, and what I, I told them today is we really need something and it does not have to be elaborate. It just needs to be something from some association official or an attorney for the associations just saying they need one, they need two, uh, or they don't, or one trumps the other. I told them it, I don't, I'm not looking for, uh, you know, a 25 page document. Um, they were very understanding. They did ask to be um, carried and uh, with the understanding that, uh, and they did consent to extend the time frame. In April, I think I saw a, a, a confirming letter come across to that effect. Yes. So they're, they're asking to be carried. Now, April, they asked uh, uh, when I was on the phone with them uh, for the next meeting, and I said, I, you know, have no control over the agenda. So I, I did not give them a date. So maybe April, you can give them a date and we'll just announce it now so they don't have to do any further notice. But I, I didn't consent to a date because I didn't know. Do we want to continue with the October 24th meeting? I mean, I'm fine. I just didn't know what else was on the agenda. Um, I don't have anything else yet. I was waiting to see how this meeting went before I scheduled it. And then may, maybe, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to, to Mr. Fitzgerald's very relevant point, um, 
maybe uh, we could have April uh, reach out to uh, Mr. Mandia's application and um, the, the Barbera, Barbetta application in the next uh, couple of days and say, we wish you good luck and we want you to come forward, uh, but just let us know if you're not gonna be ready to go on you know, X date, you know, let us know now so that we can have other people start looking for the position. I mean, that would be my, my suggestion. I don't know what else to do. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, uh, Kevin. Yeah, and, and April, that'd be great if you could do that. Oh, we do have, um, for the October 24th meeting, it would be these two applications and the one that we had postponed from August, the Gildia one, the one that um, was with Jimmy Albertus and they went and hired Mary Hearn to help them with their flood issues. Okay, so right now we have a total of three applications on. Right. Um, yeah, okay, all right. Okay, so then can I have a motion to uh, adjourn the, um, and carry the meeting for Lucille Barbetta and Benjamin Kirsch at 903 Ocean Avenue Unit 2 to the October 24th, 2020 meeting uh, without the additional need to re-notice at this time. I'll make Mr. That Chairman, vote. before they all, uh, the, the uh, vote, I would just again like to, because uh, I know there was a number of people from the public who had interest, uh, so please note that you're not going to get another form of notice and if you, you know, have a friend who is not Zoomed in yet, uh, please make sure you tell him or her uh, because there will be no further public notice and we want all the public to you know, be as informed as, as possible. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Okay, Go ahead, so, Go ahead April. Um, was there a second on that? Oh, uh, Mr. Gray, did you I, make that motion? I, I made the motion. And a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Hutchison. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 One opposed? Okay. All right. All right, uh, before we jump into our third application, Mr. Palmasano, if you're there, uh, you can unmute yourself and show your camera and join the board. We'll start uh, with our next application at Laura and Cesar Ravano at 1006 14th Avenue. And I'll just remind the board uh, for the application process, if you could mute your microphone if you're not speaking. Mr. Chairman. Um, can we, I just get a clarification on something because I, I, a message popped up. Um, the date of the October meeting is what? I have uh, October 24th. April, could you please confirm? Is that the correct date? Uh, just someone's questioning. April, you're on mute. Sorry, it'll be October 22nd for both of those applications. Okay. Okay. Just, so, sure. okay, let's, great. Let's, so, just so go let's back correct, for a second. Correct the record, right? Correct the record. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. So, uh, for the record, uh, why don't we just have a, a redo of the motion um, for the Mandia application that's going to be carried uh, to clarify to October. What is it, April? 22nd. 22nd. 2020 at 6 o'clock p.m., correct? Correct. Without the need for any further public notice. I'll make that motion. motion. Yep. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. And then April, we'll just make sure we, we post that on the website. And then the next is the uh, on the Barbetta and Benjamin Kirsch application, um, 903 Ocean Avenue, Unit 2. Uh, if we could just have a re-clarification that the motion is to extend, carry that application without the need for any further public notice until October 22nd, 2020, 6 o'clock p.m. I'll make that motion. Somebody wants to second that? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Gray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, Caesar, do you have anyone else joining in, or is it just the two of you? No, I have uh, my architect, Mark Marcel, and my attorney, uh, Constantine Bardis. Um, I don't see him on the list, unless he's there by phone. Uh, I, I believe by phone. Okay. Uh, Mark, Mark is here now. I, I just I shot him a text. Yep, he's in. He's, he's in? Okay. 
And there's Constantine. Okay, yeah. He's on his phone. Um, Constantine Barnes. All right, Mr. Chairman, can I uh, just do a couple of um, administrative things? Of course. Thanks, Mr. Kennedy. Okay. Uh, with regard to the Laura and Cesar Ravano application, uh, uh, first up, if I want to ask if there's anyone in the listening public who has any questions or comments or concerns regarding the sufficiency of the notice they received uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Ravano or their uh, agents thereof. Um, if you have any concerns, you can raise your computer hand or April, what else would they do? They would email you at? Uh, clerk at belmar.com. All right, so why don't we, we'll just come back to that in a minute, Mr. Chairman. Um, and then we'll, uh, before we get too far, we will swear in Ted Bianchi. Ted, you are the zoning officer and construction official for the borough of Belmar. Do you swear that the information and testimony you're about to provide, to the extent you provide any, will be the truth to the best of your knowledge to help you guys? I do. Okay, uh, let the record reflect that uh, Mr. Bianchi has been sworn. And Mr. Chairman, what will mark into the record before us, uh, what we as a board have before us, and has been available for uh, public inspection is, uh, we will mark as A1 is the development application package uh, dated June 10th, 2020. And A2, let's find this one second. Let's see, A2 will be the Borough of Belmar Minor Land Use Certificate and that's dated June 1st, 2020 slash June 4th, 2020. A3 is a review memorandum from uh, Leon S. Avakian, Inc. and that's dated June 10th, 2020. A4 is a variance plan prepared by KBA Engineering uh, Services and that's dated May 20th, 2020. And then A5 is the architectural plans and elevations. And that is prepared by uh, Marcio Architecture. And it's dated June 10th, 2020. And I think April, you had sent, uh, I got an email. Was there another site plan or a some people you said you sent an email, some people got a hard copy and some people didn't. Well, the people that picked it up, hard copies or were given hard copies like you and Ted have it. It was just the board members. I sent it to them electronically. Okay. So, so that's included. All right, April, has anyone um, chimed in about, uh, or zoomed in about notice issues? No. Okay. So Mr. Chairman, for the record, uh, the board secretary and I reviewed the notice and found everything to be in order. So it would be our, uh, my uh, uh, opinion, respectful opinion, that we have jurisdiction to proceed tonight. All right. Thank you, Ken, uh, Mr. Ken, Mr. Kenneth. <laughs> and again, just for the record, this is a, uh, April, this is a use variance application. So we need five affirmative yes votes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Is uh, Constantine on? All right, I think you're on, on mute. Yeah, so am I, am I yeah. off of the, the mute? Yeah. Sorry about that. I apologize. No problem. So why don't you uh, introduce yourself and uh, get on with the show? Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Constantine Bardis. I represent uh, Cesar Ravano uh, in connection with a lot of his real estate matters. I'm filling in today only for purposes of the board's questions in the event that there should be any concerning the site plan and any amendatory or follow-ups that were uh, submitted by the applicant with respect to the present um, application. For the sake of the, uh, I guess, board, um, I don't wanna bore anybody else with um, who I am and I would just rather get right into the application itself, the site plan, and any concerns or comments that we have uh, with respect to that. At uh, the unfortunate last minute, the engineer was unable to um, appear. So I think my purpose here would only be to hopefully 
gather as much information as is needed and hopefully um, be able to even get this application conditionally approved should you need anything of the engineer. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Ivano, do you want to lead the, uh, the presentation or Mr. Uh, Mr. Bart, uh, Mr. Barnes? I'm just going to have um, my architect, uh, Mark, Marcel. There he is, okay. Uh, All right. Good evening. If you could just state your name for the record. Mark, Philip, Marcel. Okay. And you're testifying tonight in your capacity as? I'm a licensed architect. I'm sorry? I'm a licensed architect. All right. Good evening. If you could just raise your right hand. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Belmar Zoning Board. Do you swear? that the information and testimony you're about to provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge to help you guide. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, the, the, the current property contains uh, three uh, single family dwelling units. So there's a, a structure towards the front of the property, there's a smaller structure in the middle, and there's a structure towards the rear of the property. So this proposal, uh, the, the purpose of this proposal is to remove the, the two structures in the front of the property. Uh, we're going to leave the, we're proposing to leave the existing one-story uh, dwelling in the, in the rear of the property, and then to construct a new two-and-a-half-story single-family dwelling, uh, again, towards the front left side of the property. And I'm sorry, did you say there's a front structure, a middle structure, and a rear, or there is two front structures? There, are, there is a front structure, a middle structure, which is sort of a finished, like two car garage. Got style. it. And then there's a rear one story dwelling. That Thank you. So the, the rear structure is to remain. Uh, my drawings address the, the, the proposed two and a half story dwelling in the front of the property, uh, which is a, a four bedroom, uh, just under 2,300 square foot home. Uh, sort of a nice uh, one story entrance porch. Uh, you kind of come into a small foyer space, you have open concept living area, three bedrooms on the second floor, and then a bedroom uh, in the attic. We sort of shifted the, prop the, the location of the house uh, to the west, or the east side of the property, the left side, uh, in order to leave enough room on the right side, you know, an 18-foot driveway width, to be able to park, you know, the required three spaces for the house in the front that we're proposing and to also provide access to the parking in, in, for the rear unit. Uh, I guess we lost Mark. Uh -huh. Mark? You look like you froze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll give it a minute here. Can you text him? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to shoot him a text right now. Um, um. Hopefully, he knows that he's still not rolling. Like just signed off. So he's signed off. Maybe he's going to. Yeah, he's going to resign in. Um, I know this is not uh, Mark's first time on Zoom, <laughs> so just bear with him. There he is. He's back. Okay. He's coming back online. There he is. Damn. Gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome back. I think the last thing we heard you say was you were proposing an 18-foot wide 
uh, driveway. Yes, so right. So we it shifted the house to the left uh, of the property so we could maintain an 18 foot wide driveway on the right side to accommodate the required three parking spaces for the front unit and to provide access to the required two parking spaces for the rear unit. Uh, well, that's the proposal. Hopefully you like it. All right, thank you. Uh, did anyone else have anything to add before we open it up to board questions? No, nothing, okay. All right, um, Mr. Kennedy, do you wanna cover anything before I open it up to board questions? Yeah, I mean, actually, um, I have some, some just some basic questions for the, the applicant, uh, but I don't wanna interfere, so I, I don't know if you want me to ask them now or want me to uh, wait for Mr. Bardis or? Yeah, our, our typical process is we'll hold all our questions till the end, but if you're through with your uh, presentation, we'll, we'll, we'll keep rolling. Got it. Mr. Bardis or Mr. Marcel, did you have anything to add on, or your, the, the presentation I, is done? I did not, we submit and we would uh, welcome the questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Kennedy, why don't you, you hit us with your questions and then we'll roll into board questions. Okay. Um, my questions were actually for, for the applicant and not the, not the architect. Um, did you want me to, you know, just some beginner questions just so we can sort of get a feel for the layout. Did you want me to ask them now or later or start now? Uh, start now. I, I think the uh, presentation is over. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Bardis, do you mind if, if I, um, ask questions of the applicants? Not at all. Okay. So let's just, uh, swear um uh the applicants in if, if you all could just state your name please um caesar ravano and laura all right. ravano all right caesar and spell ravano r-e-v-a-n-o okay and uh, uh ma'am i missed your name laura laura all right ravano. good evening and yeah. welcome to the uh belmar zoning board if you all could raise your right hands do you swear that the testimony and information you're about to provide will be the truth, the best you knowledge to help you, God? Yes. yes. Thank you. Let the record reflect that the uh, witnesses have been sworn. And uh, we're talking about the property at 1006 14th Avenue, correct? Correct. And are you the owners of that property? Correct. And how long have you owned, roughly? Uh, I think I purchased this in the, um, the latter part of 2019. 2019. All right. So what your architect had just indicated, uh, there's a front structure, a middle structure, and a rear structure? Correct. Okay. So let's just go um, through, if uh, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, just so that I have this for the information and the resolution one way or the other, whether the application is approved or denied. So let's talk about the front structure. Is that a, uh, a single family home? Uh, yes. Single family home, two bedrooms. Okay, so hold on. Single family home, so it's one dwelling unit, two bedrooms, and how, how many bathrooms? Uh, one. One. And is that occupied? Uh, no, it's not occupied. Okay. And um, uh, do you, how many stories is that? Uh, one. One story. And uh, do you know offhand the height? And you might not. I do not know the height. Okay. Um, and do you know offhand the size of that structure? You might not know that either. No, I, it's, I think it's approximately um, 800 feet. I can, 800 square feet. Okay. And then is, is uh, uh, the proposal that Mr. Marcel talked about, what, what's happening with the front structure? Uh, we anticipate um, uh, knocking uh, knock it down the front structure. All right, so you're gonna demolish that front structure. And then last question with regard to the front structure, are there any parking spaces dedicated to that? Um, ex um, currently, there is a driveway to the right of the, the structure that runs straight up the property. Okay. It's, it's just so, you know, right now it's, it was always like gravel and weeds. So it wasn't like a formal driveway pavers or- Okay. And let's go gravel. to the middle, the middle structure. Is that a single family home? I think, I don't know what it is. I guess some people are living it. There's a bathroom in it. Um, I guess that was, that was built way back. At one point, there was some sort of fireplace, some sort of heating system with a bathroom. But um, that was never occupied. That was kind of a, more of a storage. 
All right. So it was a storage or some type of accessory structure yeah. that that may have been occupied or was not I occupied. Believe so. you said? Yeah, we're way back. Yes. Now with not on the the current owner with me. Okay. Maybe prior. Um, but it's not it's not a habitable living space now. Absolutely not. And just and for the record, I mean, was it one bedroom? I would say one bedroom. Yeah, like a studio. Okay. A studio, and there was a bathroom there. Correct. Okay. And so that is not occupied now. It, no, it's not okay. occupied. And and you're proposing to demolish that structure as well. Correct. Okay. And then with the rear, let's talk about the third, the rear structure. Is that a single family home? That is single family. Okay. Uh, so it's one dwelling unit. And um, how many stories is that? That's uh, one. And you know what? I skipped in the middle structure. Was that one story as well? Correct. One story for the middle. So back to the rear structure. It's one story. Do you know the size of that? Roughly? Um, I see. I'll tell you right now. It's seven, um, 750 square feet. 750 square feet. And how many uh, stories? One. One story. Said. Okay. And how many bedrooms in that? One bedroom. And how many bathrooms? One bathroom. Okay. And is that occupied? Uh, no. Currently, it's not occupied. Okay. And your proposal is to keep that alone, leave that alone? Yes. We want it. To, that's going to stay. And, and so just so that I understand and can and help, hopefully, without being too obnoxious, Mr. Chairman, I uh, don't want to overstep my bounds. But so right now, there are three, potentially three dwelling units on, on the site? Yes. Okay. And at the end of the day, if you get your approval, there's going to be two uh, dwelling units? Yes, that is correct. So we're going okay. from paring down to only two structures on the property instead of three. So two structures with a total of two um, dwelling units. Yes. Okay. And if the application is approved as a condition of the approval, would you be abandoning perpetually, knowingly, permanently abandoning any prior previously existing three family use at the site to the extent it has not already been abandoned? Yes, it will never be a three family. Oh. Okay. So, uh, converted to three. Uh, converted into two. Okay. Uh, and Constantine, you're you're okay, um, and with the, you you've explained to them. Uh, One hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Uh, the property was a three family. It could have been even more akin to what you'd call transient or seasonal use at some point in time, when the heating unit went into one of the units. Um, at no time following the closing of the the particular piece of property that the applicant is uh, before you on, did they rent or even attempt to do so? Okay. Um, the idea was that it would be a reduction to the two family that you see now. Mr. Chairman, thank you. That was just the, the basic stuff that I, I wanted. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I got my stuff. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Mr. Kennedy. All right. So we'll open it right up with board questions uh, and we'll lead off with Mr. Malengo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Reveno. A couple questions on the, the rear structure. Will that be a summer rental? Will that be a permanent rental? What's the intended use of that structure? Um, there's a lot of flexibility. It could be um, you know, um, full-time or it could be seasonal. It could be annual or seasonal. Uh, my guess will probably be annual. Right. Well, well actually, this property is going to be, I'm, I'm going to develop the property and I'm going to sell it off. So the next owners, they will have that, that option to do, they can keep it themselves or they can rent it um, on an annual basis. Okay. Will there be any repairs to the rear building? building? Excuse me? Are you intending to do any repairs or modifications to the rear building? Uh, yes, I made some improvements to that rear um, structure. And you'll be making more improvements or that's complete as is? Currently right now, I, I put some, um, some time and effort and um, investment into that back house. I did some new, uh, I, re, I updated the plumbing, the electric, the floors, the, the outside of the, of the property, the roof, the, the uh, bathroom, kitchen, all that. Okay, question for Ted while I'm with the applicant. Ted, does it require two or three spaces? I only see two on the plan. How many bedrooms in the front house, Caesar? The, the front house? Yes. The, the one we're going to construct is going to be four. 
Okay, so that's three parking spots. How many bedrooms in the back? One bedroom. All uh, right, probably four four spots. Okay, I was t I was told by the engineer that we needed a, we needed five spaces were required, and that was based on the the report uh, that uh, April sent me June tenth from the, the engineer, the town engineer. On page two, I guess there was the last uh, number five. It says five spaces are required. Okay, I'm only seeing one bedroom only requires one. Okay. So, and you got, you got four bedrooms in the front which require three. So that's four on the property. Was he counting the middle uh, unit also? Uh, possibly when he was possibly. revealing the plans. The, the I mean, that's how he, he would come up with five. I don't yeah. know how he came up with five. I, I was Apparently. wondering that myself. I, I, I put it at four, but, and I mean, I didn't really argue the point because I, I just thought he knew the requirements. So I, I sent this over to my architect and an engineer and they built this into the site plan, the five uh, parking spots. But if I, can, if I can take out a parking spot based on the, the site plan, if I can take out maybe parking uh, park spot four, that would give uh, a little more uh, backyard room for the front house. Okay, last question. What, uh, preparations for drainage? Do you have any preparations for drainage? Yes, yeah, based on the site plan, he has uh, a drywall. Okay. The engineer, he, you know, he um, did all the calculations and it's, um, it's, um, it's on, the, on our site plan. Okay, I got that late today. Okay, no further questions, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Malengo. Uh, we'll go to Mr. Hutchison next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, the 18 foot driveway only is going to be 18 foot right up to the uh, garage. Is that correct? I mean, it's just a, a very small area. Otherwise, it's 12 foot all the way back. Um, Mark? Uh, the right side of the proposed front house is 18 feet from the right side property line. So the east. And that's, that's all the way front to back. So we, we were assuming nine feet adjacent uh, on the east side of the proposed front line for, the, for two parking spaces and then the other nine feet for driveway to access the rear parking. But uh, to, the, to the right or the, I guess it's the east of the, um, the driveway, there's an 18 foot section that's what, grass, something like that? It's gonna be gravel, it's gonna be right the gravel driveway. So it, from the house, there's, a, there's a, um, a driveway that comes out, says 12 feet, right? Uh, uh, so you lay it, maybe, maybe 10. Um, and then there's an 18 foot um, area to the property line to the to the east of the where the driveway ends. As I as I read the plans, am I being incorrect? Well, I didn't prepare the engineering drawings, but as I read the engineering drawings, the one dated uh, May 20th, 2020, the east side of the front road is 18 feet from the east property line. So the total distance from that. From the dwelling to the east property line is 18 feet. And I get, nine feet. I guess I'm having a little trouble because you're breaking up there. I'm, lo I'm looking at the variance plan, um, I guess, as opposed to the site plan. But the variance plan looks to me as if um, we'll plan that there's the five spaces and there's a grade in area, which I assumed was concrete or blacktop or something like that. And then to the right of that, the whole property line back looks like grass or, or something that's not developed there. I don't have access correct? to that. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, I don't have access to that drawing. Oh, okay. Um, which, drawing is, um, which one is that? Which one is that? Exhibit A4, I believe, Mr. Hutchison? Yeah, this is the variance plan, this is A4. Variance plan by KB Engineering Services, KBI Engineering Services. 
That's correct. Dated yeah. uh, May 20th, 2020. Right. Yeah, I have that drawing. That, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, right. I, I see a grade in area leading from the, uh, the, the, the sidewalk going back. And it looks like it's 18 feet right in front of the, um, yeah, 18 feet right in, right in front of the garage. And then all the way back until it goes where there's two parking places, uh, I guess for the rear cottage. Um, it looks like it's uh, um, nine feet. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Yes. The grade area on the right side of the house is the parking area. Okay. But, but that's, all, that's also the driveway, correct? Um, my understanding is the driveway is the whole 18 feet because you have to be able to drive around the parked car to get to the spaces in the back. Oh, okay. Well, hmm. All right. Um, and I believe on the engineer's chart on the upper right hand side, he indicates the driveway width as 18 feet and that we need a variance for that. Right. Okay. Um, I want to get back. I, I think once he takes it down, he's got it up there. I'll read my notes here. Um, in the uh, where the where the description and and uh, required permitted existing proposed. I'm sorry. I, I just have a little uh, frog in my throat here. Um, it looks like the uh, the building rear setback. It says proposed as 84.17 feet, but there's a cottage back there in the back. So I don't, I'm not sure I understand that. Oh yeah, that's just for building one? That's for building one, yes. Oh, I see. The rear step back for building three is a little further down on the chart, I believe. Building three. The rear setback for building three is indicated as 2.27 feet, which is on the northwest so side of that building. So you're calling that an accessory building? Uh, the engineer is referring to that as an accessory building, yes. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? We're over on building coverage uh, by 2%. So that's not too bad. All right, no other, no further questions right now. Thank you. Mr. Fitzgerald, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How are you tonight? Good, thank you. I'm glad you could hear me. Uh, I, I have questions for the applicant and then a couple of procedural that um, I'll get to secondarily, but I'll get the applicant's questions first. Um, keeps going out. Can we um, can we confirm what this properly what this property is legally zoned at at this stage? I, I heard you know three family going down to a two family, but if it's not a legal three family, I don't, I don't think we want to recognize or at least acknowledge that it is a three family. So uh, do, do you know, um, um, does the applicant know, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have your name in front of me, but uh, whether or not it's legally um, listed as a three family residence? Um, I'm not sure it's a three family. Um, I can look. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's recognized by the town as a three-family or three dwelling. Um, I guess three dwellings. I don't know if it's recognized as a two-family. Uh, uh, the reason why it's important is it's positive criteria. If it is a three-family and you're proposing going down to a two-family, so that works to your advantage. So it really would be important to know if it's legally zoned for three-family use. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know that answer for sure. Um, 
Mr. Bianchi, do you know the answer to that? Well, it's not zoned for a three family. That's that's a uh, that's an R50. It's a single family uh, zone. So whether those three houses are considered three family, I don't know. April, would you know if it's uh, on the map? Is it is it listed as a three family? I'm checking. Okay. Um, while that's being checked, in the interest of time, my second question is. There's a letter here from the floodplain administrator that indicates that you're proposing a first floor elevation of 10.25 feet, whereas an 11 foot is required. Um, did, did you, um, are, are you aware of that, that you're, you're under the flood requirement of 11 feet? Um, yes, we, we, we made corrections and maybe Mark can answer that. Yeah, I could answer that. We, we did raise the first floor elevation of the elevation 12. Excellent. Okay, that's good because it'll save you on uh, flood insurance that way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and then on the um, on these uh, uh, drawings, I see a recharge chamber. Could you please explain what the recharge chamber is? What its purpose? How it works? I cannot. Sorry, I, I'm not the engineer. I didn't prepare the recharge chamber. Uh, same here. It's for management of you know all the all the water on the property, and they did all the calculations. Um, and looks like the, and everything yeah. is supposed to drain to the drywall. It looks like the roof leaders are directed to the recharge chamber, and there's an overflow that goes to the curb. So I would imagine it's designed to handle. Um, you know, I would respectfully submit, and I understand if, if we're probably don't have an engineering license, we got to be a little careful on on some of the things that we're we're saying. Um, I agree. Um, if this helps, I was on the the variance uh, on the site plan drawn up by the engineer. Um, his uh, the plan notes on the right hand right hand side of um, his plans. It says no roof leaders are designed to drain towards adjacent properties. So I guess he created this to to manage and control the uh, the water on the property. Okay. I, I, I just, it's interesting that I haven't seen anything of that size or significance, but if that's the purpose of it, that's excellent. So, so uh, kudos on that. Um, and then my procedural uh, questions are, might be, uh, Mr. Chairman, might be more directed to uh, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy, because this is a devariance, um, I, I, I think that the board, where the applicant and the board should, should be advised on the burden of the criteria uh, to get devariance approval, right? If you could please reiterate what, what that means. And then sure. also, we didn't mention this before having heard or at the beginning, and typically you do, in terms of the number of positive votes he would need to get a devariance approved if we if our quorum is currently five yeah um and uh excellent point and uh 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 do you mind if what if, why don't i if it's okay i'll do it after the the board members after questions because then um or you want me to do it right now i'm, I'm totally fine well, well well i think if the burden hasn't if the burden hasn't been met to, to approve a devariance, um, I really think you as the board attorney need to advise the board that we have yet to hear testimony that would allow us to, to get to an approval. So just generally speaking, this application uh, requires a use variance. Now that's because, uh, Ted, we're, we're uh, they're proposing a use that is not specifically permitted in the zone. Uh, and I guess, uh, uh, Ted, we're in the, which zone are we? R? I think it's an R50. R50. So that only permits single family homes. So this is a use variance because they are proposing essentially two dwelling units. Now, to Mr. Fitzgerald's earlier point, if they have three units now or have a claim to have a pre-existing use for three and they're going down to two, that sort of what Mr. Fitzgerald was suggesting is um, they're still non-conforming and that's a, a big deal, but they would say that they're less 
uh, and they're, they're going to reduce the overall intensity and reduce the density and reduce the number of parking spaces and those things like that. And uh, eliminating, you know, uh, from three to two would advance the goals and objectives in the master plan. So anyway, as far as the use variance goes, as you all know, again, not unique to this case, but every case, the applicants have to satisfy positive criteria and negative criteria. And the positive criteria is essentially that they can argue and they can advance uh, that approval of the application will advance some of the purposes of the municipal land use law. And that includes some of our regular uh, things, such as you can prove that this is an appropriate space, an appropriate location, an appropriate use. Um, also, the promoting a desirable visual environment, um, providing, you know, nice, nice things. And the negative criteria is that, and this is an important part, that the application can be granted without causing substantial detriment to the public good. And that is the applicant's burden. And again, Mr. Fitzgerald, it always is the burden of the applicant to prove to you all as board members that, that this application is not going to uh, cause detriment to the public good. It's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's not going to be uh, problematic. Now, they would typically do that in terms of um, showing things like absence of grading and drainage e e issues, the absence of parking issues, uh, the absence of overcrowding, uh, the absence of, you know, overly intense things, um, overly dense ap application. So, uh, you know, those are types of things that you want to prove your compatibility with the neighborhood. Uh, is the two family use or two dwelling unit, two structures or two dwelling units on the site going to be compatible or incompatible with the surrounding neighborhood? Um, and again, a lot, a lot stems from the, the nature of whether it's zoned and assessed as a three uh, dwelling unit structure, or even if it's not, if there's a claim or a potential claim that uh, someone could argue that it's a pre-existing non-conforming use. So maybe April, do you have any, uh, did you get a chance to see any of those records? Yes, I'm just double checking uh, with the tax assessor, okay. but it appears like it's being assessed as three structures. However, the rental history is only only shows that the front and the rear were ever rented. So it looks like it's being assessed as three structures, but may have only been used as two. I don't know for sure. Okay. But Mr. Uh, uh, Fitzgerald, uh, those are some of the things, again, with those municipal land use law purposes that, that you know, you want to uh, see that these application can be caused without causing substantial detriment to the public good. And Mr. Fitzgerald, the other real phrase that we very frequently use is, does this approval of this application represent a better overall zoning alternative for the borough of Belmar? And that application uh, and proof can come in the form of testimony from, lay testimony from the applicant, uh, applicants themselves, and professional testimony from their architect, engineer, if necessary, and planner, if necessary. I was under the impression that the devariance criteria was, was a little more strict um, in terms of um, having to prove beneficial use. Um, and and I, don't, I don't know, and again, I think the applicant needs to be advised if they haven't really, other than aesthetically making it look better than, than what's there now. Um, I'm trying to get to some answers to help them here uh, because if the beneficial use hasn't been proven, um, you know, like a beneficial use would be if, if they were gonna knock down the rear, the rear house and build a new house on the front, I, I think we could make an argument that there's significant beneficial um, use to the community because of that. But if the, if the rear house is going to remain and a potential future owner could make that a summer rental, um, there's negative criteria associated with maintaining that, which makes it more difficult for us to get to yes. So I'm just trying to get to an answer here on um, where is the beneficial criteria that would allow us to, to approve this for a D variance, not a C variance, a D variance. And if I could just jump in one more uh, thing. 
uh, and we did reference this a little bit at the beginning, uh, Mr. Um, Fitzgerald, and you're absolutely right. This application requires, for a D variance, five affirmative yes votes. So the, the state of New Jersey in adopting the statute has um, indicated that this uh, is uh, a use variance which requires five affirmative yes votes. It's a higher legal threshold that needs to be um, satisfied. And the other thing is just with regard to the inherently beneficial uses, I don't think that's applicable here. Um, so generally speaking, again, it's very uh, uh, discussion uh, of, of statutes and things, but generally speaking, when you're applying for a use variance, you have to satisfy the positive criteria and the negative criteria. And the uh, positive criteria is advancing the uh, purposes of the municipal land use law, and I'll, I'll read them in, in a moment. And the negative criteria is that we can, the applicant can prove that the application can be granted without causing substantial detriment to the public good. And it is a high standard. Now, there's a special category if the application involves an inherently beneficial use. If the application involves an inherently beneficial use, then it's conclusively presumed to satisfy the positive criteria, but they still have to achieve the negative criteria. But this inherently beneficial uses are typically, uh, case law has, um, Christina, I'll take care of that. Um, you would usually, I'm sorry, would usually involve such things as um, hospitals, seeing eye dogs, uh, seeing eye dog training facilities, uh, sometimes, uh, 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 certain medical treatment facilities, but um, those are, so I don't think this would be the inherently beneficial, but it is a, a strict and, and tough legal standard. And if I could jump in, um, the tax assessor did confirm that I was right. It is being assessed as three structures. Now, does that mean three dwelling units, April? Yes. Excuse me? Yes. Okay. Mark, Excuse you're, me. On, you're on mute, Mr. Fitzgerald. It, do they, so it's a legal three family residence, April, or, or I, I understand he's being taxed for three structures. There, there's yes. no question about that, but, but is it zoned as a three family usage? Well, as Ted explained, it's not, that it's zoned, it's zoned in the single family. Uh, I'm sorry. But yeah. it, it's physically a three family in a single family zone. Okay. Okay, and Mr. I'm sorry. If I could just, can I do one more thing, Mr. Chairman? Of course, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, I'm you. sorry, uh, just to finish up, because uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald asked a really good question and I gave a less than complete answer. So the purposes of the municipal land use law, that's the positive criteria. They can hopefully prove to us that the applicant, the application advances these purposes. And the ones of note include uh, purpose A, encouraging municipal action to guide the appropriate use or development of all lands in the state in a manner which will promote the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare. And that's the reasons why you'll hear uh, you'll recognize some of this language is because we always have this in our resolutions when we approve use variances. Another um, uh, at purpose of the municipal land use law is to provide adequate light, air, and open space. Another is to promote the establishment of appropriate population densities and concentrations that will contribute to the well-being of neighborhoods. Another is to provide sufficient space and appropriate locations for a variety of residential and commercial uses. And again, that's that's a, a pretty common one in our um, resolutions. And another, and this is always an important one, to promote a desirable visual environment through creative development techniques and good civic design standards. And um, those are the, the relevant ones. There's about six other ones, but they wouldn't be relevant. Okay, and, and, and then last but not least, we, we the board cannot take into account um, whether or not there's uh, there's um, uh, in income or or value associated with with maintaining that rear rear structure uh, or keeping that rear structure, it, we can't take the financial aspect into into account in our decision. 
Uh, ag agreed. I mean, the conventional wisdom is is that uh, you know uh, the you know no one has the right to you get the most profitable use of their property. So typically speaking, in the absence of extraordinary circumstances, economic factors are not not really relevant in the context of a of a zoning application. Okay. All right. Thank you for clarifying all that, Mr. Kennedy. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions. Thanks, Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, Mr. Ross, you're up. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so we did note that you have raised the uh, elevation now to comply with the floodplain requirements. Um, the I'm assuming the existing two structures that you're demolishing currently don't comply with the floodplain requirements. Correct. Okay. Um, the crawl space, it's still annotated on the plans and there was a comment that the crawl space is not allowed. Is that being removed, I guess, to conform with the plans too? Or to conform with the uh, June 10th uh, engineer's letter? I believe that was addressed. Mark, you wanna? Well, with a, the proposed dwelling uh, still contains the crawl space. It'll still, it'll still be constructed on the crawl space with flood vents. Okay. Well, I guess I would just, uh, it says on the engineering letter that the applicant is proposing a subgrade crawl space with an elevation of seven feet, whereas a crawl space is not permitted. Um, I guess I just need clarification as to what was meant by a crawl space is not permitted if you're still using a crawl space. Or is this an above ground crawl space maybe or something? No, the crawl space slab will be for that grade, so it will not, okay. it will not be sub, you know, below so the key. So the key in that letter then is the subgrade crawl space, which you are eliminating and fixing. Okay. Correct. Right. Very good. Um, okay. I need to go back to Mr. Hutchinson's question on the driveway, because I think he made a valid observation and I'm not sure that the answer that was received is what is meant here. Um, you stated that the driveway is going to be eight, 18 feet the entire way back. That's not what's depicted on the plan here. And in fact, I think if it's going to do that, you're going to have like nine parking spaces <laughs> because all of that would be driveway on the way back. Um, and I don't think that was calculated into your impervious coverage. So I think we need clarification on that now. Yeah, I mean, I didn't prepare the site plan, but it just logically it makes sense to me that and I certainly agree that the shaded area is indicating the driveway area but in order to get to the parking spaces in the back you'd have to be able to drive around those two spots and then the engineer's chart he indicates a variance for an 18 foot driveway width but yeah I think, I think the, the I, I think I, and cl clarify if I'm wrong Ted but any time that the driveway is 18 feet and it is 18 feet at its widest point in front of the garage is I believe going to constitute a variance regardless of whether it's 18 feet the whole way back. Yeah, if you have a garage that has an opening of 16 feet, you can expand the driveway to 18 for 20 feet in front of the garage. But that's it. Everything else has to be 10. Like, I guess I need clarification because I that's a really, really big driveway um, and a lot of impervious coverage of what you're saying is what's being proposed. And I'm also not clear. I understand what the curb cut would be if that whole area is driveway. Uh, is the curb cut only going to be 12 feet as indicated on the plan or is it 18 feet? That would be my understanding. I would be limited to 12 feet. So then I'm not really sure I understand how that whole area can be driveway then but I, I guess i'm not in favor of it being 18 feet the whole way back i think that's a lot of impervious coverage there um that wasn't calculated in um but that's just my opinion um okay i think we need i need an answer on that because I'm, I'm not clear on what you're proposing as a driveway because that's, that's unclear. And if you only need four spaces, I would somewhat agree to get rid of that other spot back there. Obviously, there's a drainage and water mitigation issue going on if you're proposing these recharge chambers. So the least amount of impervious coverage, I think, would be beneficial. 
and you know have more area for the rainwater to soak in as opposed to having five spaces if you're only required four back there but that's just my opinion I'm, i'd like to hear other board members comments um on that topic uh before i you know, make a decision i won't be opposed to um going from five to four yeah, I, I I agree with you there. I just need to know too, like, is that all paved all the way over to that property line or is the driveway the shaded part? So if you could kind of huddle up on that, that would be good. I would imagine the driveway is the shaded part. But the space to the right of the driveway would have to be gravel over access to the rear parking area. Wouldn't be paved driveway. Gravel, so it could be driven on. And I guess we could agree to not drive on that part of the road, and whoever does, they would have to shovel the cars around. And so you did mention the drainage. Uh, if how is the water going to be pitched on that driveway, especially if it's going to be that entire width um, over to the adjoining house to the east? And uh, I'm not the engineer, so I can't testify to how the driveway. Yes. Yeah, I would need somebody to test that there's not going to be drainage or there's not going to be a pitch away from or toward that neighbor if that driveway is going to be 18 feet the entire way back. Well, the, uh, the driveway Regardless whether it's driven on or not, if it's part of that driveway, it counts as lot coverage. If you're going to drive around it, it's still considered a driveway and it, it's, uh, it's impervious. So I'm not sure what, what he's saying here. Um, and I, I, I'm wondering if it was calculated in. They have 1,350 some feet worth of driveway there. Caesar, is that calculated in the 18-foot wide driveway? I, I'm just I'm just reading um, off the variance plan from the engineer, and I, I'm reading what you're reading. You know, it says 13, you know, 1,358 um, uh, square feet in the driveway. I do not know. Yeah, because all 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 of that parking spot, all the driveway, all of that counts as impervious coverage. Now, I don't know whether he thinks you can just drive around and that doesn't count, but it does. Okay. Yeah, I guess I was just more concerned it was going to be paved over uh, as well, you know, like. On the right pre side? I, I, yeah, previous testimony was that was driveway. So I just want to make sure that we're clear that that's not going to be hardscaped and, uh, you know, water can run off of that. I didn't have any intentions of um, paving that side. Okay. I, 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 about the nine feet. Yes, that'll be grass. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have okay. no um, intentions of paving that. Okay, I, maybe I was confused. I thought that I heard the, the that that was previous testimony. So I apologize if I confuse things anymore. But uh, hey, Mr. Wallace, also, could, I, could I just jump in and, and just yeah. confirm with Mr. Bianchi if they're using that as driveway, it's still considered impervious. That is that right? Whether it's grass or gravel or asphalt. It's driveway, it's considered impervious? Exactly, if it's a driveway, it's grass, stone, whatever, it's, it's, uh, it's impervious. Unless you use impervious pavers and then they get a 50% reduction. All right. that, that's like a hard thing to control though, I would think. I mean, people have yards next to their driveway that theoretically, you know. Yeah, they drive on. They can yeah, drive around a car or yeah. something and then you gotta, you gotta call it a drive, I don't know. I just, I, I, was, I was personally just concerned that that was gonna be hard uh, pavement there right up to that property line with 18 feet of uh, pitched um, hardscape going toward the neighbor. I, don't, I didn't want that. I don't want No, that. absolutely not. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and I personally- paved. Corrected by the board. We would never yeah. do that. Okay. Well, it's, yeah, we're, we're clear then now. That wasn't my reading there on that either. I mean, that was confusing when I first looked at it. Yeah. And I asked uh, Caesar as well, if the board even saw fit to say, hey, put that semi impervious uh, stuff that they put down. I mean, I, listen, I'm not so impressed by it, but yeah. if that's what that would be required, we would have no objection to it. And, right. and for the record, when this was purchased, because my office did conduct 
the real estate closing and the due diligence. This was a three family property, my understanding. So when we did the, the title abstract, it was a three family. And um, it was represented as such when we did the, the purchase. I just wanted to also add that. Yeah. I, I, no, that's good. I do want to acknowledge too, parking is a, a big issue on that street. And um, I do believe that the proposed, um, you know, that you do have ample parking there. So that we, we that would well good thing, so, be able yeah. to get the floor. Mr. Bianchi, thank you for even pointing that out because if you could have more greenery there, that would be great. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. That, yeah. That's done on the, under the, uh, the ordinance under the technical section 18 of the CPI. Uh, it tells you how to do that, and it's, it's an expensive uh, procedure to do it. It's not a matter of just putting sand under pavers. It's, sure. uh, it's about a foot deep. It's got different, different grades of stone and a drainage pipe under it to get the water off of it. Yep, yeah. I'm familiar with it only because okay. I've uh, worked with it in Wall Township. Okay. I'm so impressed with it. Um, okay. The only other question I had was related to Ted's notes on the um, – on the borough minor land use zoning permit, he stated, and I think it's corrected, but I just want to double check. The second story is partially over the porch, which is not permitted. It looks as though that was corrected on the plans. Is that true? Yes, that was corrected. Okay. The second floor is no longer over the porch. All right. That's all the questions I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I'm sorry. It was, what was corrected? That the second floor is not over the porch? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Ross. Uh, Mr. Grigg, you're up next. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I just want to be abundantly clear about that crawl space, that crawl space is at grade and is not below grade. That's correct. It is at grade. Okay. And um, again, I hate to beat this to death, but that uh, driveway, if you just put grass there and pull around, continually pull around cars that are parked, you're just going to have a mud hole there, um, and the, the, you were indicating that you might be in, uh, uh, amiable to uh, putting pervious pavers there. If you put gravel, I believe it had, uh, gravel's 100% impervious, isn't it? Gravel yes, it drives. is. It is. But you could put 50% impervious if you put the proper mix of pavers with, you know, the pervious pavers with the ba proper base. You could have 50%. Right. Sure. You, get a, you, get, you get a 50% reduction with that. Right. And if my calculations are near correct, I don't have an architect's rule, but um, that extra spot that's nine feet by something close to about 70 feet that's near the property line to, the, to the, what's indicated a gravel driveway, um, that's like 630 square feet. I don't know, is that included in, I don't even see an impervious uh, coverage uh, on my plans at all. Do you know what the impervious is on this property? They show it at 50%. And that's what's, that's what's permitted. And does that include this area that's, uh, you were indicating might be gravel, might be grass, but it's a, a pull around area? That's 630 square feet or roughly that. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, uh, I don't know. This wasn't on the original plan that I looked at, so I don't know whether that was included or not. Well, actually then, uh, how about if we look at it this way, if that is, uh, whether it's included or not, um, if that was going to be pervious pavers, there's an advantage to that because of the way the system is built, there's an advantage to that. And you might as well go from the house 18 feet wide and however long it is, and the parking place in the back. We have eliminated one parking place in the back, have we? Yes. So you got one parking place in the back and um, an 18 foot driveway by something like 70 feet. That's a big driveway, but it's certainly, if, if it's gonna be there, it should at least be the least pervious system that we have available, which would be pervious pavers done correctly. Anybody agree? I'm, I'm definitely understanding what you're saying, and I would be amenable to that if uh, the applicant uh, on his further review would say that as well. Could, could I offer, uh, just in considering this driveway, um, I, personally, I'm not a big fan of the parking spaces. 
parallel to the street in the backyard. Being that you only need four spaces on the property, you could make this just one long driveway and, and hit the required spaces. There's no pull around area and you're probably gonna be okay with your impervious coverage calculation. Uh, it gives the, the rear yard a much bigger backyard uh, and, then, and then you'd have a driveway that's typical of just about every other driveway in Belmar. Yeah. Sure. Uh, now, I just, I just threw that out there uh, for the applicant to consider. I mean, it's, is that something you'd be willing to consider, uh, amending your yes. application? Yes. Caesar? Absolutely. Get rid of the, get rid of uh, parking spot four and five in the back. Yeah, so, so you're proposing to get rid of parking spot four and five in the back, and now it's just a long straight driveway. There is no pull around area. You do still have an 18 foot width, but it's only from the front of the house uh, to, the, to the, I guess, the front of the walk. Yes, I'm I sorry. Don't have a problem with that. Probably with from front of home until to where? I guess it's from the front of the garage, extends to the to the uh, east, eighteen feet. Yes. For the um, and then to the south by whatever that is, ten or fifteen feet, where it starts to taper to the twelve foot opening. Okay. It's actually shown. It really it, he's getting rid of spot four and five, and the uh, the shaded area remains driveway. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll bet Mr. Grigg would even uh, like to see that as impervious uh, papers. Uh, well, impervious my, papers. That was my intention. That from the house to one foot from the property line, or approximately one foot from the property <laughs> line, and from the sidewalk back as far as the driveway goes, that this would all be impervious papers, all uniform, not part gravel and part impervious or pervious papers. Is that clear? Caesar, you understand that? So the pervious papers will start from the sidewalk, from the front, yes. from right from the front property, and it'll extend to the the back of the uh, front house. Yes, and include the area in front of your garage of the new house. Gotcha. Okay. And you might as well include the walkway to the front door. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, why not? <laughs> make it look right. Yeah, gotta make it look good, right? Talk, gotta make everything blend money. in. It's only money. <laughs> it's exactly. only money. It's only it, it, it goes on a tree in my backyard, right? Does it? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, you know, Mr. Ross, you were uh, speaking to this, and I understand it is a big driveway, but we've reduced some of it with the parking in the back. And um, what do you think about this proposal? No, I mean, I think it makes sense uh, what you're saying, you know, the overall, I, I guess I, it's just going to, you're going to have to funnel it pretty steep there to have just a 12 foot curb cut, right? There'll be, you know, we're not allowing an 18 foot curb cut in the front, right? Correct. So there's going to, yeah. No. No, I just, um, no, I, I think that's good. I just, I'm trying to picture it in my head, you know, I feel like it's, I, I'm I'm okay with it. I think. All right. Yeah. Um, I believe that's all I have for you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so. and thank you for your cooperation, Caesar. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Do you need any clarification on that issue before we uh, move on to my questions? Did you uh, just try to give it to me in writing one more? I mean, uh, one more time. Uh, I can try. We're going to eliminate parking spot four and five. The driveway is going to be shown from the curb to the, the rear of the structure in about the same location. I'm sorry, shown from curb to the rear of the structure. I'm sorry, to the to where it is behind the structure. Okay. In okay. front of the house, you're going to have a, a 12 foot curb cut where the driveway is going to taper to 18 foot wide. Hold on, in front of the home, 12 foot curb cut where the driveway will taper to an 18 foot wide section till it meets the front of the house. Hold on, uh, 18 foot wide uh, until it meets front of the house. 
no, just yeah, to the front of the house. And then once it hits the front of the house, it's reduced to nine feet. Okay. To the rear of the, the driveway. Reduced to nine feet to the rear of the driveway? That's right. Okay. And uh, I, I think I heard the applicant say it would be constructed of pervious pavers. Uh, with pervious pavers. And it, which it also includes the walkway in front of the house. Walkway in front of the house. Now, Mr. Chairman, not to be uh, uh, critical or disrespectful, but Sister Clarita from grammar school would say that was a run-on sentence, but, but I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the worst you can do, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Thank you. That was very helpful. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, sure, Mr. Hutchison. Um, is the fourth car going to be parked then on that nine foot foot wide uh, um, driveway, pretty much to the back of the house, from the back of the house back? Is that is that where you picture the fourth parking place? If you're asking me, that's where the fourth spot would be moved to. Okay. And I'm sorry. To say it again. Fourth fourth parking space will be moved to where? To the actually on the driveway. Um, End of the driveway. The north part of the, um, of the structure. Thank you. And then, are we also saying that the um, the 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 remaining nine feet between the driveway and the property line is going to be what now? Grass. Pervious pavers? I guess I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's yard and it, and, and it would be whatever they wanted to do with it, whatever landscape that's they yard. would put there. Yeah, that's it's yard. no longer driveway. It's no longer a pull around spot. And it's okay. not gravel either, so. So it's tandem and park, and parking. Pervious pavers from here to here. No, uh, we, uh, we sh April, um, is it possible you could put this drawing up just so we can all make sure we're on the same page? Focus papers from, from here to here, here to here, here to here, straight back. Yeah. All this is grass. This is no longer driveway. Then there's no pull around. Right. It's just one long straight driveway. It's standard parking, right? Uh, That's not what I yeah. yeah, we have a little confusion on, on our end, so we might want to just discuss it. Oh, great. Okay. Awesome. So how do we get this over here? Okay. All right, and who's, can you give me possibly control of the cursor? Cool. I think you would have to share it to have control. I have to share? Yeah. Uh, okay, I can't share it, but let, let's just let's just go through it very clearly. What are the <laughs> and, and this is really for for the applicant first to make sure you're you're on board with what we're all all think we're agreeing to. You're going to eliminate space four and five. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. That the the back of that driveway, which is now in the yard, is going to be squared off to just a nine foot. A, a nine foot driveway to where it terminates at the back. Is that what you envisioned? Terminates at the back of that first house or it, the, all the way? Well, it's, it's shown, it, there's not really a measurement of how deep it's shown, but it, it, it terminates at the back of the, the driveway there. That's I, right. I'm by, envisioning that was only nine by, foot straight back. By parking, um, parking spot five? Yeah. Okay. Instead of going across, it's just going to be straight. It's going to be straight, yeah. It's going to go north to uh, south to north. Okay. And then it's just a nine-foot drive. It's just one long nine-foot wide driveway from the front of the house to the back of the driveway. That's that's what I was saying. Um, I'm not sure if that's what you were seeing. No, I follow. Okay. And then we're going to expand it to 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 the curb and over um, in front of the the garage. And this, and the, in front of the house. 
So, so right. we're in agreement that in, at least in, in the front of the house, the only part that's gonna be considered driveway with the pervious pavers is the gray shaded area. Right. Yep, perfect. Okay, and then just to be clear, where you have spot one and spot two, the, the, there's 18 feet from the edge of the house to the property line on the east. Nine foot of that is gonna be pervious paver and driveway. The, the, the nine to 18 feet to the right of it will be landscaped yard. Correct. Okay, all right, all right. So we should go back to the board and see if anybody had a, a problem or, or questions with that. Uh, why don't we go right, right to Mr. Craig. Um, it's, it's different than what I was proposing, but I'm okay with that, if you're okay with it. There's no pull around area then. You, you're not pulling around the right side or what would be to the east of that, that uh, shaded area. Is that correct? It, why wouldn't you just center the nine feet in the middle of the 18? It, like it doesn't make sense to keep it justified to the left when you could go right down the middle with your four parking spots. My, my thought was that they, they I, I'm, I'm guessing that the applicant put the house to the left because they thought they were gonna have an 18 foot wide driveway all the way back. Yes. That was, and, right, and, and, I'm, and I'm saying if we keep the house right where it is, right, the driveway could be centered on that, on that what is currently an 18 foot strip, your driveway, you know, you could do like 10 foot wide and leave four feet on each side, right down that, four, those four spots that you were talking about, Mr. Okay. Chairman. But where's the cutout? Uh, cutout right will, will, will the curb cutout interfere with that, the flow? Or they just have to, they have to veer to the right, I guess. I mean, we can, we can gently curve it over a little bit I'll be amenable to something like that if, um, you know. I think I'm the front part of the driveway could be wider. Where, you have, where you have the 18 feet? See it on the angle, starting from the angle over? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Just, just square to the front of the house. If you make that a little wider, you'll be able to get into the center driveway that Mark is proposing, which I think is a great idea. Also, you can open the doors on the cars. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. instead of being 18 feet there, you may want to be 22 feet to line up with the center driveway right. as okay. it goes down the center of the house. Mm -hmm. I'll be amenable to that. Um, I'm sorry, so Mr. Chairman, that last one was uh, relocate the driveway where? The driveway is going to be nine feet wide and it's going to be four feet away from the house and four feet away from the property line. Great. Thank you. So I'm glad we pulled this up because that's not what I thought Mr. Grieg was proposing. Um, I don't think it was either. Yeah, because <laughs> now, because I think his whole point was, you know, if you're going to have grass there, it's just going to be a pull around and it's going to be a mud pit and, you know, uh, to try to prevent that from, from happening. Uh, yeah, and by doing it this way, that can't happen. And, 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 and it isn't, and the applicant needs to understand, and especially since you said you're buying and selling this house, it isn't you, it's the future owner or owners of the house who might convert that into a secondary driveway or pull around spot. So by centering it down, you know, four spots linear, um, it'll prohibit any future use of trying to get away with, with making that, you know, uh, a, a, an eight car, an eight car driveway or a four car driveway with pull around yeah. space. So Plus, we're saving your backyard, by the way, because those two parking spots in the backyard would have been horrible. Yeah, so, so you're improving the overall design. So here's, and and I don't want to belabor this, but I think we lost the practicality of the driveway now because if this is a two-family uh, lot, the chances of two cars parking back there that belong to the back house family when they're going to get parked in are pretty much zero. So I've kind of like as I was thinking about it, I kind of liked Mr. Greg's idea of having this entire area up here be 18 foot of, of you know, the, the type of pavers that drain because theoretically now somebody can get by there and actually use the driveway for an intended purpose. Mm -hmm. 
So I guess it's whether what we're trying to solve here. Do we want the driveway to be used to park four cars? If so, a skinny driveway of nine feet isn't going to do it because nobody's going to park back there. They're going to get parked in. You're going to, you know, I bet this driveway would house one car at most um, if we're doing that. So I'm just throwing that out there because I think a, a key benefit of this proposal is that you've got a two family dwelling and you, you might be able to have off street parking that satisfies it. Can I uh, just mention, that was actually my intention, uh, Mr. Ross, was from the house to the property line. And I believe you should be one foot off the property line with a driveway. So instead of 18 feet, it actually needs to be 17 feet. But that entire shaded area and the area to what would be the east of there to the property line, that entire thing I intended to be pervious pavers, eliminate the two parking places in the back and everything else in front of the house would also be pervious pavers, no gravel. That was my actual intention, and it makes the driveway usable. While it is rather wide and it is rather a big driveway, it is also 50% credit towards the uh, pervious, and it makes it usable. Yeah, I agree with that. So, <clears throat> so, so the driveway the would end at the back of the house then? A little further back than the back of the house. Where it currently ends now, that's where the entire driveway would end. The, to the rear of parking space five, and parking space five would actually be eliminated as would be parking space four. Why don't you stop at the back of the house and then four cars, two side by side. That's what I say. Could, could be there and that saves an awful lot. And then- I don't think it's wide enough. The, the, you don't think so? I think it has to be 10 feet, right? Nine. Nine? So you had to be 18. Uh, I mean, yeah, you maybe. need a variance anyway. Yeah, I, I just think no, yeah, nobody's going to open their door. I mean, it won't, I I mean, well, I cars aren't, f aren't nine feet wide. Yeah. All right. Well, the door, well, I'm the game two with doors that. open, they are. Well, yeah, but. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, why, why don't we ask the applicant what they're sure. thinking here? Uh, maybe, maybe we shouldn't be. <laughs> designing. I, I led this <laughs> off, and, and maybe we shouldn't be redesigning what the applicant applied for. No, yet. no, no. I, I welcome everybody's opinion, <laughs> uh, but I do like the the last opinion that you do in uh, pervious pavers, uh, from uh, from the I guess the curb all the way back to the rear of the house. to the rear of the house, and end it right there. And do side by side. And do you know it will be eighteen feet, eighteen feet across from the house to the property line, minus one, one foot, I believe you suggested. I'm okay with that. So it'll be um, cars parked side by side, alongside the house. They have that potential. I'm okay with that. Right, and the, and the, you know, the back house could have like one side and the front house could have the other side. And then, you know, the people in the house could determine where, you know, if they have to juggle their cars around. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the pervious pavers on um, on the east side of the of the main house. Then you've got a nice big backyard. Yeah, that would yeah. be a nice backyard. Yeah. All right, Kevin, you got that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll need some work on it, but I, I have most of it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can ask. You're still on. Uh, could I, I want to just ask an additional question of the applicant. Behind the, uh, the new two and a half story dwelling, there's what looks like a set of stairs. Is that a deck in the back there or that's grass area? Deck. Um, I, Mark? It's just stairs here. On the, on the architectural plans, um, there's a slider. The, land, the landing. Just the, a little deck and steps. Okay. Okay. It's not a big deck. It's not that whole white area. I see. It's uh, where your AC and all is. That's on the gra on grade. Yes. Yeah. Or an elevated platform. Okay. I mean, I was willing to give you even more driveway to the back, but I understand both arguments. Um, if that satisfies I you like to the back of the house, that. it satisfies me. Um, I, I, right now, I, I like that idea about the uh, pervious driveway side by side. Give okay. it 18 feet across. Yeah, actually, I believe you're going to find it should be 17 because you're supposed to not build within that one foot next to the property line. Right. We have minus one foot. Okay. Minus one foot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, and my questions are really related to the, uh, the floodplain um, questions. 
uh, and maybe some to Mr. Uh, Bianchi. <clears throat> as far as the crawl space, uh, I, I assume that has to be designed to be within the floodplain in a special manner. We're, we're not and creating any variance for that. No, no, it ha the crawl space has to be at grade so it drains out. Okay, and and like and and vented correctly and and breakaway walls is that part of right, this? Right. Yeah. No? Well, not breakaway walls, but it's going to have to have uh, flood vents. It's not in a V zone, you know. It's just a an AE. Okay, and then and here we're not approving any variances for that. That they're just going to build that um, in accordance with the code, I assume. Is yes. That right. Yes. Okay, and then the the uh, amount of work they're doing on this property doesn't affect the fact that the rear structure is built on grade. Does it does it affect what they would have to do with the rear structure? Caesar, is that rear structure above the, the what's um the, what's called the first uh, the elevation for the first floor? That's at twelve. Okay, so you're okay. What do they have a basement back there? Yes, there is. Okay, but uh, you know it's an existing structure. You can't make them lift it. Yeah. Okay. It's a small basement, so, uh, like a Yankee basement. Right. Caesar, we're going to get an, uh, we're going to get another engineer drawing for these uh, this driveway uh, with all the calculations for impervious coverage. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. The, the only thing I want to be certain is that we're not. Um, approving something that's going to affect the community rating system. Submit an as-built with, with what Mr. Bianchi just um, had asked Doc, uh, Mr. Ravano about, plus the as-built showing the underlying um, driveway system. Okay. Yeah, would, uh, Ted, would they have to fill the, the basement? Are there utilities in the basement in the rear, in the rear structure? Yes. Yeah, that, I mean, if he's going to make it compliant, you'd have to fill it in. So, yeah, so my question is, with us approving this house on, on the, 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 the front, is it affecting what he has to do in the rear? Um, I, I don't think so. It's a separate structure. Each structure, I think, has to be compliant because they're not doing anything to the rear structure. So this would be a good question for Christine. Our floodplain administrator. Okay. Yeah, I think it's worth I think it's worth asking her just to make right. sure we don't we don't affect the, the community rating. Right. I, I don't think we will because it's a separate structure and it's existing. You know, we're not we're not altering it. We're not expanding it more than fifty percent. So I don't think it comes into play. Okay. I'm just making a note here. Okay, great. Uh, that was really my only questions. Uh, with that, why don't we close the, uh, did anybody else have any other questions? Mr. Chairman, I have one question. Sure, Mr. Malenko. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, are you there? Yes. I'm right. My question I, is, I keep popping in and out. I'm a little concerned about the rear structure only because the building is going to be up for sale and we don't know who's going to be coming in to control that, that property. Do we have any jurisdiction on saying whether the rear home can be used as a summer rental or full-time rental? Um, actually, uh, it's that's sort of a, a tough situation because uh, there's a couple of recent case law that uh, cases that have come out and say you can't basically discriminate against renters and you can't prevent someone from renting the property. I mean, we can say you can't use it as a two-family home or a one-family home, but with pretty much uh, in the absence of extraordinary circumstances, we're really not allowed to say you can't rent out your home. Um, so that gets a little bit of a, uh, of a touchy area. I'm a little concerned about the rear structure, summer rental. If that's your jurisdiction, that's it. I know the, re the rear house is only one bedroom and one bathroom. So. We can't pile anybody. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think like what you're spending overcrowding. I, I know about the you know during the summers down here, you, know, you get those animal houses. Um, I can't see that happening. It's you know it's a small structure. It's only I think 700, 750 square feet. And you're not by DJs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, forget about. It. 
That's true. Okay. We know how that Thank goes. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the excellent question. And it just happens that a case just came out in the last several months on that issue. I appreciate that. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Chairman, you, you asked to go around one last time before we close the, the board questions section. And, and I just didn't get clarity on, on the corrective action or renovation on the back house that Mr. Malango asked. I, I mean, I heard, I heard some comments about what's been done so far, but is there intention, is there any intention to improve the exterior of that house in any way, shape or form as part of this application? Uh, no, it's, it, was, uh, it was a new, uh, new roof went on, uh, new siding, uh, new windows, but um, we, did not, uh, we did not touch the, the footprint of the house at all. No, no, I'm not asking about the footprint. So, so it is new siding, new roof, new windows have been put in that, in that building? Correct. All right, That's thank correct. you. Thank you. That's what I need to know. Thank you. It's going to match the front house. All right, uh, nobody else. We're going to open it up to uh, public comment. Uh, April, would you run the public portion? Sure, one second. Thank you. Everybody could just bear with us one more minute. We're still holding, just sit tight for the public uh, portion. One moment. Sorry, I was checking with uh, Christine Bell, our floodplain administrator, to see if I could get an answer to the question that came up. Um, so basically, from a construction standpoint, since they aren't doing any construction to the rear house, they wouldn't need to make it come into a compliance with the flood regulations. However, because it's a devariance application, the board is technically voting if you were to vote to approve a non-conforming two family use, as well as to allow them to continue the non-conforming structure to not conform with the floodplain requirements, if that makes any sense. And then I guess my question would be, is that gonna affect the community rating? Um, I, I mean, it, it seems like it, from the way she was explaining it, it seemed like a little bit of a gray area. So that's something that they'll have to work out with her if the board approves the application and when they go for permits and things like that. Um, but it seems like there's some flexibility with the whole scenario because it is an existing structure. It would be on them to um, give that the benefits of keeping it, you know, outweigh the detriments kind of thing, even though it, it's a, an existing use. It doesn't comply with the flood, but they could explain maybe why it doesn't, it's not a negative impact. Uh, thank you, April. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we can come back and, and visit that while we mull that over. Uh, do you wanna run the public portion now? Yep, we have one, hold on one second. And April, just for the record, can you send your, um... Announce your email out again. Uh, clerk at belmar.com. Go ahead, Linda. Linda Sharkis, 4th Avenue. Uh, 
I'd like to comment that if you rode along this block, you, it appears that there aren't any rear structures or any back house rentals. So I think it's important if you're going to approve this application that it looks like a single family house with just having a back house that isn't so obvious because uh, they're increasing the number of units. Uh, the, the current situation is three bedrooms. So we just don't want with this um, double parking is not the typical pattern. We have many back houses in Belmar with long driveways running up them. And that's more your the norm as opposed to the exception. And to keep conformity in the neighborhood, I would recommend keeping the single, a single file all the way to the back of the house like the other um, back houses have all through throughout town. There's very few double side-by-side -side, um, tandem driveways. So that's, I just thought I'd mention that because um, it would be, then be keeping to the character of the neighborhood where the, the what you're, you've proposed does not keep that that character. That's my comment. Thank you, Ms. Sharkis. Anyone else from the public? You can raise your hand and speak with April. No, we have nobody else. Okay, thank you, April. Uh, before I open it up to board comment, uh, I'd like to I'd like to state that I'm not necessarily comfortable moving forward with this application tonight, uh, at least not the vote, until until we hear um, from the from the from the uh, floodplain administrator whether or not anything has to happen with this back house as a result of what we're approving. I, I, I think if we were to vote and and cause a disruption or or affect our community rating system, it's certainly not a benefit to the town in any way. Well, couldn't we conditionally approve? Could, couldn't we conditionally grant that approval? And if that's an issue, then we can we can rescind it and then reschedule a meeting. I mean, the only concern that I would have with doing that is that because there's no application um, to make any changes to that existing structure, how could it plausibly affect the rating? And let's take it a step further. If we were to continue to use the three units in the manner that they're used right now, it certainly would pose a detriment as opposed to the improvement that we seek to impose today. Um, would we be able to conditionally approve it? Maybe give a window of 20 days for Christine to give us a response? If she gives us the response that it's negative, then we come back. We won't commence to do anything other than revise, you know, drawings or um, what, what was discussed here. But I don't think that it makes sense not to try to move forward today give the amount of time that we need to give uh, Christine within a reasonable amount of time and then um, invoke the approval after she uh, voices her um, answer. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. is that something we could do or no? Uh, a, a, a couple of things. Again, at the, at the risk of overstepping my bounds. So, so typically at, at this point of the evening, we would either approve an application approve it with conditions or deny it. And uh, obviously we can uh, approve applications subject to, um, but Mr. Chairman, just based upon some of the things that you just said, let me just, um, uh, cause there, there's merit and wisdom in that. And I just, you know, as long as we make a fully informed decision, uh, there is a school of thought that says, maybe we carry this uh, to the next available meeting with the understanding of a couple of things that would hopefully make everybody a little happy or a little less uh, uh, agitated. But uh, if we carried it with the concept of they would submit revised plans within you know at least 10 days prior to the hearing. So at least you would see, because we did talk about a lot of different scenarios with, with that, that driveway. And I think there was some initial confusion as to what some people were proposing and versus others. So at least you would see it and there would be no confusion and no doubt. So you, everyone would see it. Um, so A, there would be avoid confusion. 
uh, B, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, they didn't have the engineer here to verify that that could be done or that, you know, I would, I'm, I'm a little nervous that they don't have their engineer to say, no, no, you can't do that because X or, you know, if you do that, it's going to lead to Y. And it also is obviously tough to engineer things on the fly. And I think we all had some experience with that tonight. And we also have the Christine floodplain administrator approval. But the concept would be if, if you adjourned it, uh, carried it with the understanding that those things would be clarified if you wanted to, and this is an unusual step, but we'd only do it if you wanted to, I I could have a, a resolution in hand so that if you carried it and if you approved it at the next meeting, if we could read a resolution right into the record so there'd be no, you know, functional downtime for the applicant. I mean, that's an unusual thing, but I just throwing it out there as ideas because I can sense that there's some apprehension. Uh, I mean, that makes sense to me, and I don't want to speak for anyone on the board, but before I ask the board, uh, Mr. Bardis uh, or, or Mr. Ravano, is that, does that sound like a reasonable path forward here? Sure. For Mr. Bardis, hopefully Dr. Ravano agrees. I'm okay. Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody on the board have objection to what uh, Mr. Kennedy just offered? Or, f or feel differently than I do. Uh, just so I could, just so I could clarify, Mr. Chairman, um, what's going on? <laughs> um, could you mute, please? Mute if you don't mind. Um, so, so um, we know that if you're if you're going to do fifty percent in, in excess of fifty percent of current structural value of the property. Um, that it triggers having to bring all aspects of the property into the floodplain compliance rules. We, we know that, that's for sure. Um, and I think that what we need clarity from the floodplain administrator is what, what's the impact re related to that. And, and, and I just wanna make sure that's what we're deferring on, right? That, that she may say, yes, it's more than 50% improvement Therefore, the back structure needs to be elevated would, would be a potential outcome here, right? So other than that, we're going to move forward with all the other aspects of this with that exception. Is that what I'm understanding? What I, what I was suggesting, but, but again, just throwing it out there, is that we just adjourn everything. And so that when they come back uh, and, and they will submit to us, a plan revisions which show the driveway so we don't have to guess and they don't have to guess and they know and they've had the the luxury of speaking with their engineer to know that what they're proposing is engineeringly uh, possible and certified and and good we would also have the luxury of having them give us the confirming lot coverage calculations we would also have the luxury of having them uh, get some type of letter from christine our flood plan administrator confirming that there are no issues on that and we'd also um kevin can um, i say something kevin yeah. can, can i say something uh christine j just uh sent a, a text and, and she said that it wouldn't affect the crs because they go by permits and there are no permits on the back house so it goes by the permit the front house has to be it's a new house and it's permitted the back house, there is no permit, so it doesn't affect it, and it won't affect the CRS. That's Christine's comment. That's excellent. Did they, uh, Ted, did they not need permits to do what they did in that rear house then? Well, you don't need it for a roof. You don't need it for siding to change the windows. You don't. Only if you increase the size of the opening, which I'm assuming he didn't. So he doesn't really need any permits for that. If he's just going to do a plumbing uh, um, bathroom or something, you know, I mean, th that's not a substantial improvement for anything. That wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't affect anything. But it goes by permits. So what are you going to do in the back house, uh, Caesar? Oh, we did the, you know, the exterior and the interior. We did the, you know, you were there for the plumbing. Uh, we just updated some of the, you know, was, you know, some of the, the piping. 
Um, the heating was totally outdated and dangerous. We replaced that. Kitchen cabinets. You know, you know, just updated the kitchen cabinets. You know, just more like painting and pretty much just updating new floors. Yeah. I did. We didn't. We didn't change the structure at all. We just kind yeah, of so it made it. We we uh, uh, refreshed it. Right. It, and now she says it goes by permit. So I, I would assume that a permit, if it's over 50% of the value of the structure, it have to be compliant. If it doesn't, it doesn't have to meet that. So we don't come under that rule and it won't affect the CRS. It's a separate structure, you know. Um, we can get a letter from her telling you that, that they did renovate the inside, but uh, just to make sure, I guess. Right, Kevin? Yeah, I mean, if, if we carry it, we can, you know, get the plan revisions and get the lot calculations and get Christine's blessing, and then you're not guessing or hoping, but, right. you know, just throwing ideas out there for everybody. That, that is my preference tonight, uh, with the understanding that the resolution could be prepared in draft uh, for the next meeting. The applicant no, doesn't lose so. any time, uh, and, and it gives a chance to, for the board, uh, at least for myself, to be much more comfortable in making a decision. John, so we already have three on for the uh, 22nd. Is there any way they could squeeze in on the 14th and then that actually becomes more palatable for the applicant Then they'd save uh, 16 days uh, should we, you know, approve it? Maybe we should ask April that because now we're relying on Christine, uh, the floodplain administrator, to get that work done pretty fast. Um, she said she could have a letter tomorrow or Monday for us. Do you think you could get this application onto the special meeting? I mean, I did already tell um, three other people they could be on, but if this is only going to be a beginning, or for either for either meeting, really. If we do board comments right now, then we're just up to vote, right? We'll look at the the you know the, the materials that come in, and then vote. Well, you still wind up with board comment. And, and what I would suggest is maybe we put them up on first on the list for uh, the, the 1022 meeting. Right. And then the way if any of the other two drop out, uh, we're still in good shape. They're, they're heard first and we can still hear who's ever on uh, for the rest of the night. Yeah, I think the 1022 meeting would be better based on what we have. Now. All right, How, does that sound okay to you, Mr. Ross? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I was just throwing out ideas. I knew we had three. I didn't realize we had three for both. So, yep. We got a lot waiting. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Mr. Kennedy, do you want to walk us through the uh, administration of whatever has to happen here? Sure. Um, so, it sounds like we're going to carry this to October, 20, uh, October 22nd, April. Yes. All right. So we're going to carry this to October 22nd, 2020, without the need for any further public notice. Six o'clock p.m. April remote meeting, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, Mr. Bardis, do you, on behalf of your client, consent to extend the time frame within which the board has to act? Yes, we do. Okay. And in that time, uh, as soon as possible, you can submit. Uh, the revised plans with the driveway, which uh, uh, will eliminate us having to, you know, write, memorialize all the things, yes. plans revised to reflect all the things we addressed. You'll submit yes. the lot calculations. You'll speak with uh, Christine, our floodplain administrator, um, and get all that stuff out of the way. And so that hopefully we come back, we have board discussion, the yes. board the vote, and yes. uh, whatever happens, happens. Yes, sir. Uh, so we would, I just have a motion to that effect, Mr. Chairman. But Mr. Kennedy or Mr. Chairman, before you do, though, I, I think if the board comments were allowed, we would have a voice in terms of which way we're leaning in terms of, like, for instance, I think the linear driveway is the better approach. So I'm concerned if they go back and they redraw it, yet we still have not opined on that they're not going off with a full with a full knowledge of, of the board's reaction to the comments and questions that that had come up you're assuming unanim unanimity amongst all five of us in terms of how this driveway should be treated i'm not sure if that's true mr kennedy we've had two requests then to do uh the board comment at this time 
is there any detriment into doing that board comment now? I, I still believe after seeing Christine's letter and, and any revisions, we'll, we'll go back out to board yeah. questions, board comment next meeting. Yeah, you can do it tonight. And I, I think we, we, we give them an idea of what, um, of, of what uh, board members are thinking. So, uh, and again, there's no guarantees here as to how we're going to vote. Um, and, and so, you know, uh, to Mr. Fitzgerald's point, let, let, let the applicants at least hear what some of the board members are thinking relative to the driveway issue and, um, and then they can act accordingly. All right. Uh, so, um, unless anybody objects, we'll start, uh, we'll open it up to board comment right now before we make a motion to, uh, to carry the meeting. All right. We'll start with, uh, Mr. Hutchison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my, my major concern was the driveway. So um, I, I'm, I'm a lot happier with the, the 18 foot driveway to the back of the house, leaving a lot of uh, pervious area in the back for grass and things like that, uh, and a much nicer backyard. So um, that's my feeling. I think the rest of the questions uh, have been answered. Thank you, Mr. Hutchison. Mr. Malengo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you know, I'm still concerned with the back house. I think that will come up in discussion in our next meeting. Um, I'm in favor of the linear driveway, maybe a 10 foot wide going back rather than the side by side, because I think the nine foot is a little tight. And um, my, my preference would be the linear driveway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Malengo. Uh, Mr. Ross. Sorry, trying to find the unmute button there. Uh, so I'll just start with the driveway. My preference is for what Hutch and uh, Mr. Grigg, uh, the combo there proposed uh, with the uh, wider driveway, I think it'd be more useful. Uh, that street, if you ever tried to park on that street, it's impossible even in the off season, there's zero parking. It's a very uh, narrow street to begin with. And I think it'd be uh, much more useful for a two family home uh, or yeah, two family property, which is what we have here. Uh, so I would be in favor of that proposal, which uh, I think they they put it on the table there. Um, my additional comments, um, I also want to say that I, I heard uh, the comment from the public about the uniformity, and I appreciate that. However, I also think it's a little safer um, for fighting fires and getting apparatus and things back there if you have a little bit wider. That's, that's really tight block, and there is a lot of back property homes within that square block. Um, I think the comment was made there weren't many back homes in there, but when you walk that block, uh, 14th to 13th, there are, there's almost like a little community uh, of homes back in there. So um, like a little grove of trees and there's a lot of uh, back structure. So I think, it, I think it'd be safer for uh, that type of uh, fire apparatus. I think the benefits also uh, improved uh, light quality um, now there's not three structures there. So the neighbors, there's going to be a little bit of light there uh, where the yard is. And um, these are all reasons why I'd be in favor of the application at this time. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Mr. Fitzgerald. I think that there's positive criteria associated with uh, reducing the, um, if in fact it is a three family, consider, technically considered a three family, that it would be going from three to two. So I think that's very beneficial. Um, I too remain concerned though about uh, a back house future uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, summer rental. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think that I feel strongly enough about it that, that I would um, not vote for this application. Uh, but, but like Mr. Milango, uh, and, and as the member of public mentioned, I believe the, 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 the linear driveway with four um, parking spots is more in line with how the rest of the neighborhood is handled. And, and the two by two or four spots is not something we, we have typically seen or done. And I, I don't know that I would uh, approve it in, in that situation. And, you know, I, I don't, I'm not at a stage right now where I can say it would be a condition of, of the application, but I do think consistency, um, I, I think the only reason why we're having this discussion is because they moved the house to the left, making the opportunity to do two by two feasible but I still think a linear drive with a walkway um, uh, to uh, Mr. Ross's comment 
Um, I think it's harder to get to the back house with a two by two parking situation. And I think a linear driveway would allow better egress and um, uh, for, for uh, emergency personnel to get to the back house. So I definitely think a two by two is, is worse than, than a single four driveway uh, situation. So um, that's how I feel about it. And, um, you know, but, but I am happy to see that we have a little bit of positive criteria here that would lean me to vote for this, assuming that we could get to that linear driveway. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, Mr. Gregg. Uh, most of my comments are gonna be concerning the driveway, but I do like the idea of uh, eliminating one of the units here. So we're going from a three unit property to a two unit property, which is quite positive. Uh, and along the, uh, the ideas of this driveway, I, I believe if you did the math on it, if you had a gravel driveway that's nine feet wide, as opposed to a, a pervious paver driveway that's 17 feet wide, your impervious coverage would be basically the same. And I think human nature is going to have people drive on whatever is there. So if we have them put a nine foot driveway down the middle or next to the house, they're still gonna drive around the cars. They're gonna park on each side of that nine foot driveway and pull around it. And if you look at the safety factor getting out into the road and the fact that we've eliminated uh, some, some parking that's gonna be used up on the, on the street there on 14th Avenue, I think this side-by-side -side driveway is actually a, a big benefit. We've, we've uh, not really significantly increased and we may have decreased the impervious coverage. We've reduced the number of cars out in the, par in the uh, street and it's gonna be easier for people to get in and out. Um, that's just the way I feel about it and I know that it doesn't, it's not compliant with what has been previously done, but do we need, if, if what's been previously done is a mistake, should we continue making that mistake or maybe find a way to improve it? Uh, that's all I got for you. Thank you, Mr. Gregg. Uh, in general, I'm in favor of the application. Um, I'm concerned about the community rating system, but I think I've heard all, all positive items on that. I think overall, the application is improvement to the neighborhood. Um, for that driveway that, that you know that I'm not exactly sure I feel strongly one way or the other. Um, so I'll leave it up to the applicant on what they want to do there. But uh, overall, I am in favor of the application. Uh, so with that, that's the end of um, board comments. And uh, unless anybody has any objections, I would make a motion to uh, to carry this meeting to or carry, carry this application to the October 22nd, 2020 meeting. Second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Malingo. And, and maybe one more just to be safe. I'll, I'll, I'll third it then. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Gregg. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, did we get that okay? Yes, we did, thank you. All right, so uh, Mr. Hutchinson? Yes. Mr. Malingo? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Palmazano? Oh my God, I forgot. He's there, but he's on mute. <laughs> and I just realized I forgot him. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, I'm sorry. I agree with most of the comments. So uh, I heard everything. I don't have any other questions and uh, I'm in favor. Okay, and you agree to carry the application? Yes. Okay, Mr. Gregg? Yes. Mr. Lisko? Yes. <laughs> All right, so the application is carried and we will uh, look forward to seeing your um, revisions. Thank you. Mr. Kennedy, um, regarding the floodplain administrator, who, who's gonna be responsible for that? Am I reaching out to her or? I will, I'll take care of that. Okay. Thanks, April. Thanks, April. No problem. All right, April, uh, we, uh, I, we don't have anything one, else on one this thing, oh, I'm sorry. One thing, John, April, April, make sure that you mentioned to her that there have been permits issued for the back house okay. and it's an interior renovation mm -hmm. and that they replaced the roof and the siding and changed the windows and okay. see, what she has, see what she has to say about that. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, April, there was no other business tonight? No. Okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Greg. I'll second. I'll second. And thank you. I think that was Mr. Uh, Mr. Ross. Yep. Sounds good. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Aye. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.